Cyber News is at CES 2025, and we're on the hunt to find the best new tech. About to head in right now to see what we can find. Before we do that, make sure you're subscribed because we'll be here all week uncovering all kinds of new cool stuff. Come on, let's head inside. Last year at CES 2024, Honda introduced their saloon concept. And this year, they're back with a prototype. We were told that they're working to have this vehicle be the world's first level three autonomous self-driving vehicle, which means completely eyes off. You know, whereas the competitors right now are full self-driving, but you know, you have to have hands on the wheel, you have to focus. This will be the world's first eyes off self-driving vehicle if they have their way with it. Here in the center panel, there's kind of this like crystalline construction here with some really rad lighting on the inside. Yeah, just a really appealing design experience in here. Honda says their design philosophy is thin, light, and wise. And you can definitely feel that in this vehicle. You know, it feels like it doesn't have any extra fat. It feels like a spaceship that could take off right now and at top speed. This is the world's first bendable monitor from LG. At the push of a button, it can go from a flat screen to a 900R curvature. All right, so what do we got here? Something really exciting. I mean, we have this huge OLED that is now, as we call it, bendable. What this means is you have the ability to change the curvature at the touch of a button on this. I can press the button and bring it down all the way to a 900R curvature. And that's like perfect where the position is going to be on your desktop, on your, uh, you know, for your computer setup. This is an excellent monitor. And then it, of course, has the immersive capabilities to go from flat when I'm working to curved when I'm gaming. Wow, so LG's bendable offerings are here to stay. They're a new line. Uh, they seem to be pretty popular. They certainly garner a lot of interest at CES. That's why we're talking, right? So, uh, yeah, it's one of those really cool flagship WoW products that, oh, this is like perfect for me. We just hope to sell a lot of them. No pricing details yet, and release date will be put out later this year. So what are we looking at here? So this here is the OLED T, one of a kind transparent OLED TV. Uh, only available in the 77 inch size as you see here, but is now available for sale on LG's website. So what you'll see here is if you see the box behind the television, an uh, actual curtain will roll into it as you see it'll come down from the top of the screen right now and it'll roll into the back and then be your transparent design. When you want the black to come up as a genuine TV look, you can hit a button and you can call the curtain up to the TV to see it as a full television display. What I can tell you about is the zero connect box, which everything connects to on the TV at the bottom right corner, is gonna be within a 30 foot radius, supports up to 120 hertz. Anything you plug into the TV, you'll communicate wirelessly via that box. How about price point? What are we looking at? 60,000 US retail price. Wow, okay, and is, it, is this available right now it or is, when's yeah. the release? Yeah, they uh, ship out on the 16th of this month as of LG's website this morning. Um, depending on orders, of course, that date is subject to change, but right now they're available for pre-order on LG's website. This is the brand new Atari handheld game station Go. It's like a revived version of a retro vibe. You know what I mean? It's, it's somehow like, it feels retro, but it also feels new and cool. So some of the key features of the Atari Game Station Go is that it includes the paddle similar to our Atari Game Station Pro from last year. But now in addition to that, we are including a trackball and a number pad, as well as shoulder buttons, which are all new features as part of the portable handheld. Uh, additionally, it has a seven inch screen, and then of course stereo sound. It has HDMI out for connecting it to your TV, as well as pairing up to two additional controllers so you can play those wirelessly, almost kind of like a Nintendo Switch, but with your favorite Atari games. It has a micro SD port that uh, you can use for firmware updates, wink wink. Additionally, it has a feature that we've developed called Smart Glow. Only the controls that you need for a particular game will light up, which is really helpful for different games over the years that need different buttons. This is our all new intro screen, super exciting. It's definitely not 8-bit, I'll tell you that. I mean, there are some 8-bit games, but uh, it does a lot of things. You can see the general UI, which is all new. So this is the Atari library, and then it's divided by console. So these are the stat picks. So really the games that we thought people would have a, a great experience playing on the device. And then as well, it's divided by consoles. How about price point? Do we have a price point for this thing yet? Yeah, so the price point for this is gonna be uh, $149.99, and uh, that's the, our MSRP. And uh, how about release date? That's the other big question. 
Yeah, so the, the date that we're saying is, uh, is Q3. That's kind of the, the public date that we're sharing. But uh, we know people are really excited about it and uh, we hear you. I'm sitting inside Aptera, the world's first solar powered EV that is literally driven by the sun, which is the company's sales pitch. This company was able to do something super cool that nobody else has ever been able to do before, and that's to create a vehicle, a solar powered and electric vehicle with way more range because of how efficient it is. Yeah, so let's do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Man, that has some pickup right there. Yeah, yeah. So what's really cool, you see we're solar charging. So even though it's, you know, near sunset now, we still get 95 watts from the solar. Wow, so real time it's giving you the stats on how the vehicle is charging right now. Thank you Welcome so much back. for taking me on the ride. I really appreciate it, of dude. Of course. We were just walking by Unitree stand and we saw their new humanoid robot offering and we're lucky enough to run into and get to know a roboticist here. Can you give me just a top line overview of what is going into making this thing walk around and shake hands and wave right now? Yeah, so so there's a lot of different ways to, to do it, but all of these systems have, have three things. Like there's, there's input, there's compute, and there's output. So the input is you know, how do you know you're stable? So there's inertial measurement units, which is a combination of an accelerometer, which is an acceleration uh, sensor, a gyroscope, that's like a tilt sensor, and then some of them can, uh, hey buddy, some of them can sense uh, uh, um, forces on the feet, so they know if they're leaning more on the, I know, they're so cute, they're one eye. Uh, they can sense uh, ground reaction forces on the feet, and uh, you take that sensor data, you fuse it through different types of uh, technologies, and um, use it to drive the motor. So they're always an instant from falling over. So it's a very fast loop, continuously checking, correcting, checking, correcting. And that's why they move like that. Because it's not pre-recorded motion. It's really like reacting and adjusting. And I think we're like low years, like less than five years away from seeing these in stores and not look giving them a double glance because you've seen them, they're around. This is Lenovo's new ThinkBook Plus Generation 6, the world's first rollable AI PC. I love it, never seen anything like it before. This laptop works in two simple modes, 14 inch mode, which feels like your classic compact laptop for everyday use. Then when you need more room, it unrolls into a 16.7 inch vertical screen. Great for getting stuff done or just having extra space to work with. In 14-inch mode, the resolution is 2000 by 1600, clear and sharp for most tasks. But when you expand it, that jumps to 2000 by 2050, giving it even more vertical space to play with. It's a simple idea, but it makes a big difference when you're juggling multiple tasks or just want a more immersive screen. Whether you're coding, working on a project, or just scrolling through vertical content, this rollable screen feels like it's made to adapt to whatever you're doing. It's a pretty bold move from Lenovo. They've always been about pushing boundaries, but a laptop with a rollable screen? That's a whole new level. It's compact, clever, and honestly, just really cool to see in action. So talk to me about this new product we got here. What is this? Hey, this is the first time we just launched the X-Real One Pro to the public. For people who have never seen the X-Real glasses before, can you talk about some of the use cases for this product? How are you intending people to use this? Users love to use this product. One is for the immersive entertainment. They can just connect the glasses to their phone, to their laptop, to watch the movie they like, especially when they just lay, lay down on the sofa and the lock the screen over this, uh, at this direction, yeah, just to chill out and watch the movie. That's our own personal time. Very cool. You can see how this would be pretty beneficial if you needed a larger workspace um, or you wanted that kind of immersive entertainment experience you were talking about, you know? For, our, for us glasses wearers, I have to ask the question, are there any plans to offer prescription lenses in these glasses? Yeah, yeah. If you get this product in the box, we will have uh, uh, we will have the inserts with with a prescription. Pinch to confirm. Yeah, use yeah, use your right hand to pinch to confirm. Ah, uh, this is rad. Yeah. Okay, I, so now what you're seeing is uh, like a, a football match. I am. The, the little TV is 
right here. Yep. Uh -huh. And you can use the keyboard, the, the arrow key. Okay. Maybe the up key. There we go. You just push the screen further. Oh, okay. So I can I can make it yeah. smaller or bigger. Or bigger and into different levels. Uh, this is going to be uh, actually one pro is start pre order on our website and on the Amazon. It will start will uh, start from five ninety nine, but for the other device, actually one is will start from four ninety nine. And how about the launch date? Immediately or when does it launch? Uh, we already start pre order and uh, probably the shape date will start from March. Last year I was impressed by X-Reel's offerings, but this year the screen is bigger, it feels crisper. Um, you know, look, it doesn't feel like a super dramatic step forward, but uh, it's very cool, you know? And I think we're getting to the point where it's lightweight enough, where it's crisp enough, where it's stable enough, where you can see this as a viable alternative to sitting and watching your TV or looking at your phone. It's comfortable. 